Look at this, guys. Nudging three dollars a litre. Mm. However, in the desert, what's petrol worth? Yeah. It's priceless, really, isn't it? What do you do? Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad filling my motorbike tank up, yeah. costing 52 bucks. Fella here said he had long range fuel tanks on his Land Cruiser, it cost him $850 to fill everything mm. at three bucks a litre. There you go. Bikes are the way to go, eh? Tonight we have an artesian spring bath. How cool is that? Considering where we are, in a desert, it's just here. This is a crack up. Auto light. It's a shower. There you go. And a sunset to boot. So an artesian bore is hot water out of the ground. That's what it is. And uh, uh, we're several nights in on the bikes now. And I'll tell you something right now. That is going to feel good. I'm going to sit in that thing for hours. Oh. Oh yeah. And you know what? I've been savouring a little hip flask, it's a little one, of some Jack Daniels and I've got one Coke can on me and uh, I was thinking of when the right time would be to crack that out, like a celebration cigar, metaphorically. Well we've done Big Red, we're broken this trip's back I reckon, so I think tonight's the night. I knew I'd know the time, I sit by this fire here. and have my Cuban cigar, AKA Jack Danielson Coke tonight with the boys. What's Woody order and pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Meat lovers, please Woody. So people become very interested about the way we eat way out here in the desert during this trip. If you're my age, late 40s, do you remember as a teenager camping on trail bikes, the good old days, you went down to the local army disposal store and brought army ration packs. They were like a bag of assorted preserved foods for soldiers out in the field. They were expensive and they tasted bloody awful. Nowadays, there are so many dehydrated meal packs out in the market and they were actually originally designed by the hiking community. And no, this ride is not sponsored by Backcountry Cuisine. Uh, there are so many brands out in the market, you sport with choice. We've bought several packets of assorted meals and they're small, they're extremely light and they are very, very tasty. All the boys here tonight have got them. A few nights ago, I had roast lamb and vegetables with mashed potato and chives. And guys, it was the absolute bomb. The boys have brought similar meals and they too love them. Tonight for me, it's beef stroganoff. Um, you can pick these up at camping stores. Look, I'm not saying they cheat. I think these are about 16 bucks. We picked them up for about 14 bucks a meal. But this is the double size. Uh, it's a must have when you've been riding a dirt bike all day 
and you're really, really hungry. So let me show you how to prepare these and um, let's see how they go. Add in 500 mils of hot water. Reseal it. So we'll let that rest for, rest for 10 minutes. So there we go. Oh, it's been 15 minutes. Let's have a look. Spaghetti bolognese. It's actually become really heavy, surprisingly. Aren't they good? Now and again you come across these house ruins. I don't know what the particular significance with this one is because the information sign so badly faded, you can't read it. But uh, I can't tell you how in the middle of nowhere we are to come across someone's once home. Can you imagine living out here where the most precious thing in your life was water? Because there ain't any. Not a bathroom in here I can use, is there? No. Tell you what they do have here though. A dirty big eagle's nest. Right there. See him? The nest is huge. No one's home though. Isn't this interesting? We've arrived at a town called Maori, and this town is where the original GAN back in the 1880s used to pull through. But in the 1950s, the Railway Commission changed the gauge of the tracks, like how wide uh, the tracks were apart, so the GAN could no longer come through here as of about 1981. Uh, the GAN we know today goes through Central Australia. Not through Maori though, so now it's a bit of a ghost town and a bit of a uh, railway memorabilia is scattered all through the um, town centre here. So there you go. One for you, Elise. The original GAN pulled through here. Very cool. This is all the Australian history that I, I never knew we had. And Australia's first mosque, apparently. Didn't even know we had one of those either. Back from the 1800s, the first Afghan settlement here at Maree. Where is this little town? Just pulled into this bakery at a town called Farina. I think it's a has-been town from the 1800s. I'll tell you something right now though, it's the best sausage roll I've had in years. And don't think it's that remote. Channel 9 Adelaide is here doing a segment on it as well. Pretty cool. A bakery in the middle of the desert. Seen a lot of pubs in the middle of the desert. This is the first bakery I've seen in the middle of a desert though.
before we're going up since 1am like a normal day. No, no, we're getting up before, we have a late start, we don't start to five. <laughs> How's the KLR going, alright? The KLR is awesome, <laughs> mate. It's an upgrade. <laughs> Lemon squash boys. We don't have to. Ah, oh, we can't. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, another way straight to that. now in the northern end of the Flinders Ranges and today we are entering a private property called Mount Samuel and Mount Samuel and another nearby property Sky Trek are the most infamous dirt bike riding tracks right here in the Flinders Ranges um, cliff face drops a lot of hill climbs and I'm told it's every part as good as the Victorian high country so if that's the case, I'm very excited and um, hey, Victorian high country, those are big shoes to fill. So let's go and have a look and check her out. thinking about it.
Well, this is what we're here for. This is hardcore dirt bike riding, guys. Long way to go yet, though. Yeah. <laughs> to get back to camp, the toughest track awaited us, and we're already tired. We had to ride through a dry creek bed, and it was full of loose rocks, shale, sand and stones. It was probably the most technical riding I'd ever done in my life. What do you reckon, gents? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> I thought I'd take it though. I didn't hear you coming. That's why I stopped up there for a while. What do you think, Pete? What's the situation? Unbelievable. Isn't it? Probably some of the best riding I've ever done. Me too. Yeah, beautiful. Man. Yep. All terrain. You ready to start the day's ride after the warm up? That afternoon we sat around the fire talking about the day's fantastic riding. Our bikes looked worse for wear. We had absolutely punished these bikes over the last several days. We laughed as we discussed how our ads would read come the day we ever sold them. Motorcycle for sale, only ridden to work on weekdays, never dropped, never been off-road. Yeah, right. Well, it's three degrees this morning in the Flinders Ranges. And when you're in a tent, that's bloody cold. There's already a frost on Scott's bike. That's whilst packing up, incidentally. A bit fresh, mate? It's coolish. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, we're head, heading off to um, Sky Trek this morning, which is that second part of that um, really cool riding area that I spoke of yesterday. I'm pretty sore when you're using your knees as suspension every day, all day, you know you're alive. Anyway, I've been drying my gear out. Here's my clothesline. Off for another day. It's bloody cold. It's the coldest time of the morning. It's freezing. Just before the sun comes up. Look at the ice. Shocking. Your bike iced over, is it? Yeah, look at the seat. Nice work, mate. And because you can't carry much for breakfast, a uh, little camping hack, a moto camping hack, is I usually down about two or three of these roasted nut bars with yogurt on the back. So, Breakfast bars, good quality breakfast bars, and a cup of Billy coffee, and you're good to go. As for water, precious commodity uh, around here. So, in my dry rider jacket, I have a two litre water bladder inside the jacket. So when I'm riding, I can just uh, pick up that blue tube and stick it in my mouth and have a drink. So that's the hydrate when I'm riding. And I also have an additional three litre water bladder on the back of the bike in another hydration pack bladder there. And this is for um, cooking, washing, washing up at night, washing pots and pans and um, clearing my teeth, all that stuff. So, yep. Five litres I carry, so I've got to use it very sparingly. So there you go. That's how you cook and eat moto camping. It's our last, last ride today, so I'm gonna gear up and uh, we're gonna make the most of it. Here we go.
Woody's down. You good? Yeah, all right. I just stepped off it. <laughs> I come over there too fast and I stopped here. I just couldn't put my foot down, so I just stepped off. Cool. As long as you're all good, mate, and the bike's good. Um, yeah. Well, hang on, I better get that side and help you. Where can I pick up handlebars? Thanks, Brett. Gotcha. All right, beautiful. On your Woody. Thanks, <laughs> What hard riding, and we've now arrived at Nathan's Knob. Don't say a word. <laughs> We all knew that the ride through the infamous Skytrek would be tough. We didn't know though at the time that Scott had had a crash, twisted his handlebars and hurt his knee. What we did know however was how rich in indigenous culture these hills were. And although we didn't find them, the station owners spoke of ancient Aboriginal arts scribed into the walls of the caves here. It really felt like we were riding through a part of our own history, even if it was just for those short few hours. Well, our trip had reached the end. What a time. We all parted ways in Broken Hill and the boys set off for a cold, rainy ride home to Sydney. And there I was, back with my girls, with mild hypothermia, in need of a nice home-cooked meal.
a long hot shower. You did it! You did it! How long have you been out here waiting? I've had time to reflect on those 10 days, riding through the toughest trails, entering South Australia, New South Wales and Queensland, covering over 3,000 kilometres. This trip certainly reminded me of why I love the wilderness, that feeling of being in touch with nature, our land, the earth, back where it all began. As for you, if you're going to take this on, don't just throw your leg over your bike one Saturday morning and take off into the desert. Plan ahead and you too can conquer the Simpson and lose yourself in the Flinders Ranges. And when you do reach the top of Big Red, I might just be there waiting for you. <laughs>